Hello and welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about the all-important flowchart, a super simple tool to build and understand, but is often underused and is super useful when made correctly. What is a flowchart? A flowchart is a diagram that reflects a process or algorithm. Various symbols have different meanings. Generally useful in industry for high-level processes or simple tasks that don't require much visual detail. So they're a bit different than work instructions or operation standards, which do have a lot more detail and include pictures and are generally useful for training or referring to when you're not sure how to complete a specific task. Flowcharts are a lot more general. Go to this area, activate this process, do this thing. It doesn't actually tell you how to do it in specifics. Flowcharts were first invented in the 1920s by Frank and Lillian Gilbreth. And you might remember them from my time in motion study video. They were very influential in the world of industrial engineering. I said there were different symbols with meanings. Let's go over some of the more common ones. First, you have the line slash arrow. This gives the direction that the process follows. Just follow the line, follow the arrow. It will connect tasks that come one after another, or it will connect documents or ideas together. Then you have circles or round rectangles. Generally, these trigger the process to start or end. So you'll see one on the very left or top or the very right or bottom. They will often contain the trigger and text. Buzzer activates, flip switches, this process starts. Some flowcharts I worked with in the past always had circles in the beginning. Uh, the high-level documents were called customer-oriented procedures or supplier-oriented procedures, known as COPS and SOPS. A lot of them would have circles at the top that would say COP09, and that was the trigger that started everything. You knew you were in COP09. And sometimes the end trigger would be going into a different procedure. So at the bottom it would say process ends move to SOP03. For example, rectangles generally almost always represent processes. You'll generally see more rectangles on a flowchart than anything else, unless you're working in more niche fields, data analysis or things like that, that might have a lot more data related symbols. But otherwise, you're going to see tons of rectangles because rectangles are things actually happening. Diamonds allow for a choice to be made. They generally allow two options, and depending on which option is chosen, it will lead in a new direction. The ones I see are always yes-no options. You have the rectangle with a curved edge. This represents documentation that is needed or should be referenced at a certain point. Say perhaps in the flowchart someone has to use a bandsaw. Well, there's probably documentation on how to operate that correctly whether it's from the manufacturer or internally your department has some, so that would be a good time to put that symbol in. There is a cylinder, which represents that a magnetic disc, or perhaps flash disc nowadays, is involved. You would see that more in data. Data heavy or algorithmic, if that's a word, applications. Again, sticking with the data theme or computer algorithmic idea, there's the parallelogram, which is basically input and output data, generally seen again in data processing applications. You have the rectangle with two vertical lines. This shows that a predefined process is already in place. It can be used to refer to another flowchart. So now that you know the basics behind what flowcharts are and some symbols used in making them, you can go out and create some for processes all around you. Although I'd recommend follow some general rules for usability. When connecting your boxes or shapes of some sort with lines, try to cross them as little as possible. You see that image on the right? One of the lines has a little half circle. That's supposed to show that the one line is jumping over the other. So if you have to do the necessary evil of crossing lines, do a half circle so it looks like they're jumping over each other. It helps follow the path better. Have your text inside the shapes be as easy to read as possible. This is where abbreviations and acronyms are very useful. 
I've seen flow charts where you'll have a process symbol, so a rectangle, with like three sentences in it, and that is really hard to read and follow. Don't have a hundred symbols and one flow chart. If that happens, segment the flow chart. Break it out into different parts. You can probably find natural areas in your high level process where you can break things apart. Unless for some reason you need your 90 symbols because it all happens very quickly, which usually isn't the case. So as with a lot of things in industrial engineering, it's very efficient to segment things. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you now know a lot more about flowcharts. Generally, when you're making one for your workplace, it involves a lot of different people coming together to talk about how they think the process gets done. And you'd be surprised, even with high-level things, there can be disagreements. Things as fundamental as how you deal with suppliers, customers, invoices, just general high-level processes, people can have slightly different ideas on, or sometimes even dramatic ideas. So these flowcharts really help you get things standardized. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm doing a number of engineering videos over the summer of 2016. Thanks for watching.